There are some events that are so overwhelming that you can't simply be a witness. And it will be with you all of your days. Welcome to Centennial Olympic Park. I'm Melanie Snare with the History Channel's Vietnam Memorial Tribute event. We're going to be speaking with veterans as well as family members to connect the stories of the names on the memorial wall. Jan, you are a decorated and wounded vet of the Vietnam War, but almost as importantly, you're the founder of the Vietnam Veterans Memorial Fund. Tell me about the fund, and we're standing beside this incredible replica of the wall from D.C., and you are a big reason why we're standing here today. Well, I'm the president and founder of the Vietnam Veterans Memorial in Washington, D.C., known as the wall. We're here today because we're getting the photographs of casualties from the state of Georgia who gave their lives in Vietnam to be used at the Education Center. You can find more about it, it's called buildthecenter.org. Okay. But essentially this will be a place where these photographs will be displayed and where people will learn about the values of, of leadership and courage and duty that these people showed during that a very difficult time in American history. Tell me a little bit about the event itself, what we went through today. Well, the event was to call attention to the wall, the memorial wall. Um, there was a half-scale replica of the wall that was here in Atlanta. Um, and in, we've also done in Philadelphia. We're going to be in Chicago next week and Washington the week before. And we were in New York about three weeks ago. And it's to call attention to putting a face to the name on the wall. There are 58,272 names etched in granite on the Vietnam Memorial Wall. And Jan Scruggs, who's president and founder of the Memorial Fund and built the wall, really, um, with his fundraising and his ideas, he's now got this campaign to, for everyone to try if they know anybody or know somebody who knows somebody. And with the internet, it should be easier mm -hmm. to try to find photos of every one of the 58,272 who died. So far, he's gotten 22,000, but he needs yep. whatever that is more. Right. And, um, and stories to go with that. And eventually they're going to be uh, in an education center, which will be in the mall at the mall in Washington underground. This is Second Lieutenant, Marine Second Lieutenant Jackson Elliott Cox from Burke County, Waynesboro, Georgia, who was my best friend at the University of Georgia. In fact, there were four of us, a former Lieutenant Governor, now Pierre Howard of Georgia, a, a, a Superior Court Judge, Alex Crumbly, myself and Jack Cox that spent inseparable time together at the university and when Jack graduated, it was 1966, and he came in one day and announced to us he was going to be a Marine. And he went to Paris Island, he got his commission and went straight to Vietnam. But unfortunately on the 25th day of March 1967 we got the word that Jack's had been killed in action. His mother Emily is still alive today and I communicate with her all the time. She's 99 years old and just recently had her 99th birthday. Her dad is, his dad has been passed for some time, but we treasure the memory and the thought of Jack and the sacrifice he made for his country. He was a proud American who volunteered to fight for the best of America. So Jill, you came down today for the Call for Photos event. Behind us, they're scanning photos, connecting the names from the memorial to actual faces and people, and your father is one of those. What is it like being here today and remembering him in this capacity? Um, you know, it's any chance I have to honor my dad, I always, uh, you know, want to do that because I don't want him to be forgotten. It's wonderful that his name is etched on those black granite panels on the wall in Washington, D.C., and also on the traveling walls and the wall south in Pensacola where I live. But the names are one thing. It's putting a face with a name and, and what is that person's story? You know, where were they from? What did they do? What were they like? Um, I think that's so important that long after I'm gone and, and anyone in my family that people will know who my dad was. They'll know what he liked to do, that he was a pilot, that he's still missing in Vietnam and that he believed in his country and in service and you know that he gave his life for the United States. So I just I think it's really important that people submit photos and that, that the, those names come alive. We are here today uh, to get some photographs 
uh, from the uh, state of Georgia. We now have over 22,000 nationwide. Our partnership with the History Channel is exactly what's, what we need and it's exactly what's happening now to bring about a great deal of national awareness. You're going to see this all unfold here in November and people are going to know about the Education Center at the Vietnam Veterans Memorial because of events like this. These traveling walls, as well as the Vietnam Memorial right. in Washington, are powerful. They bring home the sacrifice, the, uh, the valor of all those uh, young men and women. There's eight women's names uh, memorialized uh, in what was until Afghanistan, the longest war the country ever fought. So we think uh, the war was debatable, uh, but the service wasn't. And that's what we're trying to have people remember. Why do you feel the partnership between the History Channel and the VVMF is so important? Well, you know, the History Channel is really all about telling stories, all kinds of stories that occurred in history and events. But we feel especially proud to tell the stories of veterans, whether it's World War II, World War I, Civil War, Vietnam, um, or the more current wars. So it, we're all about telling the stories of the veterans, and Vietnam in HD is sort of a culmination of that for the Vietnam War. Georgia has 1,500 or so names on the wall yes, and 187. Has. From Atlanta. That's exactly yes. right. Yes, that's correct. And I don't, I think we've only collected about 20 some, maybe more now that you've yes. brought 75 yeah, in. I think we're probably up to 100. Excellent. We want to do more. So, uh, folks who are out there at home, uh, we've got a long way to go. We have 1,500 uh, veterans from, it, from the state of Georgia, 187 from Atlanta. Uh, so, if you have uh, a photograph, uh, of a veteran. I think this is a wonderful way to contribute uh, to this vital effort. So you brought your photo and you've scanned your photo yes. so we encourage, you want to show it? We encourage all of you from Georgia and anywhere for that matter if you have a photo please bring it and you can submit it. We're going to give you that information how to do so but thank you for contributing to the Wall of the Hills. Thank you and thank you all for doing this. This is really a very healing wall. Well, it's ironic that you're doing this because let me tell you what the three of us that survived after Jack's death did for his parents. We took a photograph very similar to this, sent it to Italy and had an oil painting done of Jack to present to his mom and his dad because we know what that memory, how much important that memory is. What Comcast and what the Vietnam Veterans Association and all those working on this today are doing is bringing to life the memory of great heroes who sacrificed and lost their lives for America. The mission in part of this program, this six-hour mini-series that's starting on November 8th, is to try to show our gratitude and to let the veterans tell their own stories from sort of battle to battle. So we have tried to get veterans from all the branches of the service from as many battles as we could to kind of cover the war from 1964 when we had advisors in there through the end. Um, the troops were really pulled out in 73, but the last helicopter, everybody remembers that shot in 1975, um, when we really just had diplomatic personnel there. So the story is told, the war is told over six, six hours through the voices of 13 people who were in the front lines, either in battles or in the war, and also when they came home. Ten of them are veterans, one is an army nurse, one is a PO, wife of a POW, um, who was a POW for five and a half years, and one is a UPI correspondent who was over there four different tours and wrote a book called We Were Soldiers about the Iadrang Valley uh, battle. So in their voices, we're telling the story of the war. It was definitely a very emotional day, but very special for everyone that was involved. Thanks to the History Channel for making today possible and the Vietnam Veterans Memorial Fund for the call for photos so that we can connect faces with the names on the wall. Be sure you do your part and go online. Until next time, I'm Melanie Snare.